South African Civil Society Information Service. I am Fazi Lafaluk in Johannesburg. The Leo Plus 20 Summit is taking place from the 20th to the 22nd of June in Brazil. World leaders will come together in Rio de Janeiro where they're being asked to make voluntary commitments towards a global plan for sustainable development. Now this essentially refers to development that takes place in a manner that it reduces poverty, advances social equity and promotes environmental protection. But it looks like prospects for a new global agreement that everybody signs on to are looking bleak. The Interpress Service reports that after two weeks of closed door negotiations, a UN preparatory committee has failed to reach consensus on a global plan of action for sustainable development. And NGOs are warning that Rio Plus 20 looks set to add almost nothing to global efforts to deliver sustainable development. Be that as it may, there are still many national and international debates taking place in the run-up to the big summit in Rio. I recently attended one hosted by the Mapungubwe Institute for Strategic Reflection, also referred to as MISTRA. MISTRA is a think tank and research institute headed up by Joel Nechitenze, who has held many senior positions in the ANC and in government. In the early 2000s, he was head of government's GCIS, and he later went on to head up policy coordination in the president's office under President Thabo Mbeki. I talked to Joel Netichenje about the role of the South African government in sustainable development, the green economy in South Africa, the minerals energy complex, our unhealthy reliance on coal, as well as our country's decision to go ahead and build nuclear power plants, which goes completely against international trends. Take a look at our discussion. Welcome to Saxus, Joel. Thank you very much. I'm particularly interested in hearing from you what your ideas are of uh, the role of the South African government in sustainable development. And when you're talking about that, I'd like you to talk to this issue of the green economy. Is this green economy really going to deliver jobs? And is it going to deliver the jobs that are going to pull our people out of poverty? Thank you very much. Um, perhaps one in response to your wide-ranging question, should they just state fundamental principles? The first principle in this regard is that uh, sustainable development is the responsibility of all sectors of society. Governments and states, yes, indeed, do have a very critical role to play to lead society, to develop policies, and to ensure their implementation. But all of society has to participate in this. As you can well imagine, the private sector, business has got a critical role to play with regard to the implementation of the policies and approaches of sustainable development. And so do societies in general as well as uh, communities. That's the first point that, that, that we need to make. Uh, the second point that needs to be made is that uh, this is referred to as sustainable development because we are rejecting a dichotomy in approaching issues of development. That uh, development cannot be such if it leads to destruction. It has to be sustainable. But sustainability cannot manifest itself if there is no development. You have to have a continuing improving quality of life of all of society, both domestically and internationally. Uh, but secondly, this needs to be done in a manner that ensures the regeneration of the resources of, of, of the globe. Now, what has been South Africa's approach in this regard? We accept the fundamental principle of sustainable development that we need to undertake our programs of poverty reduction, job creation, dealing with matters of education and health and so on, in a manner that ensures sustainability of our environment. But those programs themselves should encourage development. And what do we mean by this? If you consider a particular approach and a particular te technology, you have to pose to yourself the question, will this lead to the destruction or the regeneration of the environment? And how many jobs will it create? How much will it cost? 
in terms of human resources, in terms of financial resources and so on, and what impact will it have on the environment. And as South Africa, we also have to weigh specific needs and specific realities within which we operate. Uh, our energy generation is dependent on coal and we can't eliminate that immediately. So it becomes critical that through our research and development uh, programs, we are able to develop technologies that result in cleaner uh, coal, coal, coal usage. But as South Africa, we can use other endowments like uh, solar energy, We've got areas of the country that have got uh, access to, 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 to the sun all, almost 365 days a year. And Can I just uh, take you back a little bit to mm, that question, mm, uh, the issue that you were talking about mm, in terms of our reliance on coal mm, and it's, it's a dirty fossil fuel. Mm, um, in your presentation in the conference earlier today, you talked about the minerals energy complex when you talked about this issue of coal. Um, that's a pretty strong complex in South Africa. Um, what are your thoughts on how we can actually break, break that complex, the minerals energy complex? How can we challenge it? In my view, it's not so much a question of breaking it. The question is how gradually to adapt how we do things in such a way that we become less reliant especially on, on fossil fuels. The problem of our economic uh, development path historically is that uh, we became too dependent on coal and did not develop sufficient alternative sources of, of, of energy. Um, our industrial development has also been very energy intensive. Is there a way in which we can reduce that? Uh, and the issue about coal is that uh, our challenge is not just energy intensity, but also carbon intensity. And I was going to make the point earlier that even if you were looking at the narrow area of minerals, there are alternative minerals that you can use for purposes of developing clean energy. One of the areas that are being researched now would be fuel cell technology and the hydrogen economy. Uh, and these fuel cells are essentially very efficient batteries that would be able to, 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 to propel vehicles, but can also be used uh, in stationary applications for households as sources of energy. They are made out of, in terms of the casings, platinum group metals. In order to take that hydrogen and catalyze it into energy, you require the platinum group metals. And now South Africa has got 80% of the world's reserves of platinum. Uh, and the question is, how do we use that endowment to develop this new clean energy? Um, the one advantage of uh, the hydrogen economy is that if you were able to source the hydrogen in a clean way, it could be from water, it could be from gas or any other sources, you'll end up with a situation in which you have very minimal emission out of the production of the hydrogen with regard to its transformation into energy. The byproduct is water. And, and, and not carbon monoxide. So and is therefore, our government moving in that direction in terms of developing these technologies? The government is definitely moving in that direction. The Mapungubwe Institute for Strategic Reflection is doing a research project in partnership with uh, the Department of Science and Technology looking at how we can participate in the hydrogen economy. Um, the Department of Science and Technology has, for instance, set the target that by around 2020, 2025, South Africa should have a quarter, 25% of the share of global uh, fuel cell technology, the global fuel cell technology market. If you were to do that, you would add perhaps something equivalent to about a third of the current GDP into the South African economy just from this one subsector. But attached to that would be scientific implications. Are we developing the scientists who would be able to do that research and ensure applications? Secondly, does our educational system 
um, provide the possibility for training young people for that purpose? What, what about uh, matters to do with uh, economics? Are we preparing various parts of the country to utilize uh, this technology? And, and how do we ensure that we enter uh, the, the, the hydrogen economy globally? But also, lastly, there are matters to do with geopolitics. If indeed the hydrogen economy takes off, it means virtually all of the globe will be dependent on an endowment that is located in one geography of the globe. How do we as South Africa ensure security of supply to the globe, but at the same time become a critical participant in processed products, such as the fuel cells themselves? So that, that, how mm. do we ensure that this resource doesn't become a resource curse for us? Yes, how do we ensure that it does not become a, a, a resource curse? Uh, and amongst others, it's to precisely uh, participate in the processing of the resource and it is to ensure that we become part of the epicenter uh, in the cutting edge of uh, fuel cell technology and the well, hydrogen I'm glad you economy. mentioned this issue of cutting edge. Mm -hmm. My perception of South Africa though, and perhaps you, you would challenge me on this, but my perception is that we seem to be lagging behind in terms of our um, uh, uh, embracing of sustainable development and renewable energy um, as a pathway for the country. Um, and I'm saying this because a country like Ethiopia has already gone online with a, a really big wind farm which is supplying a a significant portion of the country's energy needs um, that's coming from the wind farm. Uh, Kenya is going to be going down that route pretty soon. Um, I think by the end of this year they'll be online and I understand that 20% of the country's um, energy needs are going to be provided by what's been reported as the, the biggest uh, wind farm in Africa, in Kenya. Um, and there are similar other examples from other African countries. Not to say that South Africa isn't looking at establishing wind farms, but we certainly seem to have fallen behind these other countries. Um, any comment on that? Uh, I wouldn't have all the details about what is happening in government and uh, in terms of the programs that are being implemented. But uh, as I've mentioned, um, fuel cell technology and the hydrogen economy is one area in which the Department of Science and Technology is uh, keenly involved. It's financing the research that is happening in hydrogen South Africa here at the University of, uh, of, of uh, the Western Cape, work that is being done at uh, UCT and, and elsewhere. But uh, you might have read uh, the integrated resource plan of the South African government about the various energy sources and balances amongst them building up to 2020 and beyond. Amongst others, we are looking at nuclear energy as one of the sources. Um, I wanted to ask you a question about uh, South Africa's decision to pursue nuclear energy. Um, Generally, this is an issue that environmentalists have been against, particularly in the aftermath of the disaster in Japan. Um, even in a country like Japan now, uh, there's huge public pressure against um, going back online with these nuclear power pl plants over there. And certainly in a country like um, Germany, um, there was immediately a decision taken uh, that took place to shut down all the nuclear, nuclear power plants in that country after the disaster in Japan. Um, and given this international trend that's taking place, which is kind of against nuclear energy, um, can you comment then uh, within that context on the South African government's decision to pursue nuclear? Because it's a very dangerous um, yes. source of energy to pursue. The first point that needs to be made is that uh, it is not pursuing only nuclear. There is solar, there is fuel cell technology and the hydrogen economy, there's wind and so on. So it's just one amongst the various sources of energy that uh, the South African government is, 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 is pursuing. The point was made earlier uh, at this conference that we're attending that uh, there is no source of energy that can be entirely clean and there is no source of energy that wouldn't have its disadvantages. 
Um, you might be aware of debates that have taken place over the past 20 years and more about large dams and the impact that they have on, on, on the environment. And, and some poor communities. And, and poor communities. And some people were campaigning against large dams. But hydropower is one of the cleanest that, 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 that you can have. So if you look at any source, it would have its disadvantages. Uh, and nuclear technology also has its disadvantages. But the fact of the matter is that uh, if you want to have balanced sources, you have to look at the variety of uh, things that you can do. And nuclear is one of them. There is debate that is taking place, of course, about whether in a given time frame, if you have got a particular suit of resources, where should you deploy them? Uh, you might have seen in the debates that are taking place in the National Commission, the National Planning Commission, um, given the resources that we currently have, should this go to nuclear energy or should we pursue uh, the, 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 the shale gas that is said to, to be located in, in uh, uh, parts of the country, Northern Cape and so on. Um, but the issue then arises, doesn't shale gas have its own dangers? Uh, the way in which uh, hydraulic uh, fracturing or fracking takes place, some people suggest, might have seismic impacts. On, on, on particular parts of the country. So it's a matter of uh, weighing trade-offs and making choices, taking into account what is best for the country at that particular moment. Thank you very much for joining mm. us, Joe. Okay, thank you very much. And mm. thank you for joining us at the South African Civil Society Information Service.